All right, this is Marina with JCon Systems, and today we're going to be going over some molds for making lenses. Now, lenses are pretty difficult because they have to be perfectly clear. They have to have no bubbles, no dust, no dirt. So it ends up being very difficult to get a perfect casting in one go. But the nice thing about molds is you have multiple attempts. And sometimes those attempts don't turn out very good. So we'll be going over my method, at least. Uh, we've just recently got to the point where I was able to pour these without any bubbles. Before, one of our main issues has been forming a small bubble at the very top when filling it. So uh, this was cast in a cup like this. Uh, the main reason for that is I could put it back into one of these easy to find cups. Uh, yeah, actually, it's really hard to get fully back in there due to the fact that, you know, it's silicone. But if you cover the inside with something like an ease release or WD-40 or something, you know, whatever won't get into this, that's the main thing. You don't want oils or ease release getting into here because the ease release will affect the finish of your part. So I try not to use that when I'm making lenses. Yeah, the nice thing about having to go right back into the cup that it was molded in is that it holds it nice and tightly shut. Normally you have to use rubber bands or something to hold split molds together, but that can cause deformities where the rubber band is. This stops it from spreading apart at all because it's the exact same size as the part. It has no reason to be able to open. Though this is a softer part, so if you injected something with really high pressure, and there wasn't really any areas for it to go, like only a few small vents, then you might end up with some expansion inside because it's a pretty soft silicone. But we have three vents at the top and we aren't really injecting with very high pressure. I use a small little plastic syringe with a tube attached to it to inject the resin in, which is where the first problem came into place. As injecting it from the top, you would end up with a bubble at the very top where you were injecting from because the air can escape out of both sides of the hole, but it can't escape directly out the middle. And since that's the highest point, that's where it wants to escape out of. So to remedy this, you could have put the syringe on the side like this. That would have helped a little bit. I've tried that and it sort of ended up with a similar problem where a bubble would form right beneath where I was injecting it. So my final solution was to have two cups stacked on top of each other, just mostly so I had clearance. And in the bottom of this one, there was a hole that led up straight into the bottom of the mold, right into where the bottom of the lens would be. So by injecting it from the bottom, all the bubbles would flow straight to the three vent holes at the top, the one being in the very center, being where I used to inject from. Uh, and that sort of solved all of our issues with our bubbles because I was able to force all of it out through the top. Now, for this resin, I'm using clear, Crystal Clear 200. Uh, you do need to both degas and uh, cast this in a vacuum chamber. Now for most things, it's not really that much of an issue because the bubbles in 200 are very minimal. It almost comes into like a water-like consistency. Uh, but since it's a lens, any tiny bubble is gonna be magnified when you're viewing it. So it's a good idea to make sure to do everything you can to avoid those bubbles. One of the things I did notice that I will likely be trying on the next mold is when degassing uh, Crystal Clear 200, and it changes from resin to resin, it even may change depending on the quality of your vacuum chamber, but uh, it would basically boil nonstop. I had it sitting in a chamber for nearly 10 minutes before, and it was still bubbling at the top. Normally the bubbles stop once all the gas is out of the system, but some fluids uh, will bubble for a lot longer and some will just continuously bubble forever until it hardens and cures. But uh, I think this might be one of those resins that does that. But one of the things I'm gonna try is instead of pulling it through the syringe, uh, because it, it while it is has a water-like consistency, it is still somewhat viscous. So as you're pulling it through, it has quite a lot of resistance and this does act as basically a tiny vacuum chamber and it can cause some of that bubbling inside so it might be creating micro bubbles as I pull it in. So one thing I would try would be having the syringe set up and pouring it in through the top after degassing it. But you have to then watch whatever air bubbles are left in here because as you push through, if you push too far, you're gonna push that little air gap at the very end of your syringe into your mold. So you have to be careful there also.
but for the most part, all you need to do would be to glue these halves together just so you have some clearance for this to go under. And then you would, uh, I normally just rubber band this to the side of it so it doesn't fall over while it's in the chamber because I leave this attached. Uh, another thing that what I needed to do was attach a straw, normally a shorter straw than this, but this is just what I have on hand, uh, and fill it a little bit past the top of this. This is because those micro bubbles that are in the resin when you put it in the uh, pressure chamber, all of them shrink and that pulls the excess resin down through the straw. The one time I didn't do that, I ended up with a very small bubble at the very top because it pulled down and didn't have enough resin uh, past the uh, top of the mold. And it actually caused a tiny bubble there. So if I fill it up a little bit higher through a straw, I'll be able to have that excess resin to get pulled down as it shrinks inside the uh, pressure chamber. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. Now again, what I normally use on the inside of this would be some ease release. Now, as you can see, there's no gaps at the bottom there. That's gonna hold it nice and tight in there. The next thing we need is to insert the tube into the bottom of that. And uh, that hole was made, again, with just these little brass tubes. I get them at Ace, you can get them really anywhere. Uh, but Ace has a good selection of different sizes for you to choose. And you could use these when you sharpen the edges of them to drill into silicone basically. And you'll end up with a little puck of silicone and gives you a nice clean hole because there's not really many good options when it comes to trying to put a hole in silicone. And I'm just going to hot glue this into place. So it has basically a stand to sit on. So I don't have to worry about the this getting in the way. We have plenty of time to mix this up and degas it. Which is good, it's nice to not try to rush these things, but work with whatever you have. All right, now we're gonna go put it in the vacuum chamber. So I'm going to try that method where I pour it into here. All right, and as you can see, there's still actually a few tiny bubbles in here, which will hopefully be worked out by our pressure chamber. And we're going to pump this in until it comes out the straw at the top. Quite a bit of pressure considering how thin this uh, tube is that we're injecting through. As you can see, now it's coming up through the top. Perfect. Now I'm going to take this out. All right, and this should be good. Now we're just going to put it in the pressure chamber and check on it in a week. somewhat evenly. All right, so we have our part of the pressure chamber. We made a few changes right here, uh, adding a little funnel to have a little bit larger of a reservoir for the resin to sit, to fill up any voids that develop in here when the bubbles shrink. Quite alive. 
excess resin that got wasted from this, but as long as it got our part out, that doesn't matter. Normally I like to keep this little stem on because uh, this type of resin takes seven full days to fully cure, as opposed to uh, it'll be dry in 16 hours, but it'll be soft. And I like to keep these stems on so I can put them in a little clamp and hold them in place while they dry the rest of the way, because if you lay them flat, they'll slowly flatten out, they'll form flat spots, and you don't want that on a lens. But as you can see, very nice and clear with no bubbles in it. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.